So as the vortex blue technique is taught uh, from, for the directions for use, um, this is, they usually start, they, we like to um, discriminate between small and large canals. On small canals, we will start with a 3004. On a large canal, we'll start with a 4004. And you always take the file to resistance or working length, whichever occurs first. Now, I can tell you in my practice, resistance occurs first on the vast majority of the cases that I treat. And basically what I try to do is put light apical pressure on these files. And it's almost basically almost just the weight of the handpiece and contraangle. I do not push on these files. When we, we all have a tendency when we hit resistance to push the file, and that's when you get into trouble. That's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. If you feel resistance and if you feel that the file is not progressing a half to a millimeter at a time, remove the file, clean the flutes, and re-enter the canal. Or go to a smaller instrument. So if you, if you enter resistance, go to the next smallest instrument. We're always recapitulating with a number 10 or 15 hand file to maintain the glide path and to obviously to maintain apical patency. With any rotary filing technique, it always starts with the, uh, a well-machined, well, a well, uh, machined, well instrumented glide path. And I like to always make sure that that glide path starts um, with a 15 or a 20, and I prefer actually a 20 diameter. So the glide path is always established with hand files or other techniques um, before a rotary uh, file is introduced. This video um, will show the flexibility of the Vortex Blue file, and for demonstration purposes, we're doing this with our gloved hands. Obviously, clinically, we would not do it with a gloved hand, but with a uh, with sterile forceps. Um, but you can see the reduced shape memory. It does not come out of the box straight. There's a little curvature on it, and as you place the curve, some of the curve remains. We take advantage of this reduced uh, shape memory by actually being able to pre-curve pre -curve these instruments, which is amazing uh, advantage uh, for us in, in uh, maxillary and posterior, maxillary and mandibular posterior molars. Um, you can notice the blue color. This is fantastic where you can see the debris as it contrasts against the blue color of the file. You don't normally see this in other rotary files, but this is fantastic. If you see this, you need to remove this debris. Take that sterile uh, two by two with alcohol or chlorhexidine. Just a couple of slides that we're showing you here that, that, that um, accurately and graphically display to you the flexibility of the vortex blue files. Um, the proper way to pre-curve any instrument, whether it be vortex blue or a hand file, um, is with uh, sterile cotton forceps that you see in the upper right hand portion. You put a gentle curve on the instrument that you see in the bottom left. And then the bottom right, again, it's displayed again. These files are extremely flexible. I think that's a tremendous advantage uh, for all of us uh, to be able to pre-curve these files. It shows you the flexibility of the file in, in the constricted canal space, how it, how it can adapt to the curvature. So again, um, this is one of the characteristics of this file that really has attracted me to it. And, and um, I apply it every day in my practice on, on uh, every case that I treat. Okay, so let's talk about the vortex blue variable tip variable taper sequence. Okay, this, this is a very interesting and very easy way to use these vortex files. Obviously, first of all, we're always going to establish a glide path, and I like to do it to a size number 20. I like to either use hand files or the new path files to establish this reproducible pathway between the orifice and the working length to a size number 20. Once I've done that, I will start with a 3506 vortex blue instrument to resistance, and I may make one, two, sometimes three passes then a 3004 to resistance, then a 2506. And now I'm probably approaching working length. And many of the cases that I treat, I would say probably 75% of the time, I'm at 2506, I'm at my working length at that file size. I'm very calcified, constricted cases. I may have to go to a 2004. 
or a 2504 or even a 2004 or 1504. Okay, but this is basically the variable tip variable taper sequence. I'm varying the apical tip diameter and the taper as I progress down the canal space, starting with a 3506, ending with a 2504. So if I get a 2506 to the working length, what I usually will do then is go back to the, the go uh, reciprocate and go back to the 3004 instrument. Again. Just for my own personal use, just for, for my own, uh, in my own eyes, I like to finish my cases with an 04 taper at the apical one third level. So again, if I stop at a 2506, if that gets to working length, I will then revert back to the 3004 and maybe even the 3504. Okay, on distal, on, on single uh, distal roots of lower first molars or palatal roots, a lot of the time I'll be able to get the 3506 to working length. And if that's the case, then I'll sequentially file up with a 4004, a 4504, or 5004 to the proper apical dimension I want to establish. If I feel that 3506 is that dimension, I'll stop. So again, with this variable tip, variable taper sequence, one of the advantages is, is again, I'm using less number of instruments, less number of files, which is what we all would like to see. And we'll go through the uh, variable tip, variable taper sequence, starting with the 3506. We're going to resistance, very light apical pressure. One thing about videos is sometimes we'll, we'll um, give you the wrong impression that we're putting pressure on the handpiece just from the aspect of videotaping through the microscope, that actually this is a very light touch. So it's a very light touch. Again, just the weight of the contra angle and the handpiece. Here I am at the 2506.2 working length. Um, now I'm going to pre curve uh, the vortex blue file. You can see the pre curve for easier access. Just another demonstration. The file's not rotating yet. Now I start it. Okay. And now this is the 2504 in the mesial buckle. <clears throat> I may have to sometimes go back and forth between the 2506 and the 2504. Make a second pass in order to achieve my working length. Okay. Cases I get extremely challenging, very difficult. The ones that most general dentists don't want to don't want to deal with. And uh, and this is what I this is what I have to deal with. I have to be patient. Once I reach the 2504 taper, I'm now progress up to the 3004. Okay, so now the mesial buccal canal is instrumented to length with a 3004 vortex blue instrument. You can see I make a couple passes to that working length. So once again, be patient with the files. Do not put a lot of pressure on it. Very, very slight apical pressure. Recapitulate between the file system, between the, the variable tips and the variable tapers. And I think this will, will really um, give you a successful uh, instrument result if you follow the uh, the principles of the instrumentation take your time take your time don't be in a hurry do not use excessive force make sure the flutes of the files are cleaned um, once they are removed from the canal space do not instrument the canal space if the flutes are built up um, with debris 